neuroimaging brain imaging is also known as neuroimaging structural imaging methods are used to image the structure of the brain these procedures help to diagnose any injury or disease in the brain such as tumors functioning imaging helps to understand the functions of the brain it also helps in diagnosing diseases related to metabolism or brain disorders or disease there are different types of neuroimaging x-ray technique computerized tomography or ct scan magnetic resonance imaging mri positron imaging tomography that is pet functional mri diffusion tensor imaging transcranial magnetic stimulation that is tms let us see each one in upcoming slides x-ray technique initially this technique was used widely to explore the reason behind any neurological deficits the conventional x-ray did not help much in observing the neural activity of a patient suffering from stroke or neurological disorders it only provided information about the structures that absorbed the x-ray the cerebral ventricular system and circulatory system within the brain is examined by using the contrast x-ray technique in this technique a substance is injected into one compartment of the body that absorbs x-rays either less than or more than the surrounding tissue this creates a contrast during x-ray photography pneumoencephalography and cerebral angiography are two ways in which contrast x-rays are used the former is a very old radiographic technique to examine the brain cerebral angiograms are most useful for localizing vascular damage and help to detect any tumor so this is how an x-ray looks i'm sure you would have seen it before computerized tomography or ct scan This is an x-ray technique used along with the computer that helps to view the structure of the body and the brain. This is a huge cylindrical ring in which the person lies down. The x-ray is passed from one side and the x-ray detector is placed on the other side of the patient's head. Slowly the x-ray and the detector are rotated and the photographs are taken from all angles. All the photos are then collected by the computer. and a ct scan of the brain is produced a number of scans are taken and they are then combined to get a 3d picture of the brain neurologists often use ct scans to diagnose blood clots tumors sclerosis or any internal injury etc and if surgery is to be carried out or not magnetic resonance imaging or mri This technique is used when detailed picture of the patient's brain is to be investigated. This technique uses a strong magnetic field to gather images of the brain in frontal and horizontal planes. Unlike CT scan, it provides more detailed and clearer picture of the brain. This technique helps to know the blood oxygen flow to the different areas of the brain that are active. the resolution of the images are high and changes are recorded as they occur in real time it is safe as no injection is given to the patient now i want you to pause the video and just look at this image and try to figure out what are the differences between a ct scan and an mri scan okay moving to the next slide positron emission tomography or pet pet scans help to detect the changes in the metabolic activity taking place in the brain it does not provide any structural information about the brain rather it provides images of the brain activity that is functional brain images it is an invasive method where an injection of radioactive 2 deoxyglucose or 2 dg is given to the patient when it is absorbed by the patient the patient is given a task to do and while doing the task recordings are made the images recorded show which part of the brain was actively involved in the task p 
PET scans use radioactive chemicals with a short shelf life made in cyclotron. So cyclotron is a device to accelerate charged atomic or subatomic particles. It is an expensive technique, hence it is mostly available in research hospitals. Functional MRI or fMRI. It is a less expensive and less risky technique than PET scan. fMRI primarily measures changes in blood flow or hemodynamic response. Currently, it is the most popular method to be used in cognitive neuroscience as well as for medical diagnosis. Diffusion Tensor Imaging or DTI. It is a method that identifies those pathways along which water diffuses. Water diffuses in the tracts. Diffusion tensor imaging gives image of these major tracts. DTI determines the location and also the orientation of neural axons in the brain. This method gives an idea of how the different areas of the brain are connected to each other. This is the particular advantage of this technique as compared to other technique. Now let us see what tracts and axons are which were mentioned in our last slide for more clarity. On your left, tracts are neural pathways that are located in the brain and spinal cord. That is your central nervous system. Each tract runs bilaterally, one on each side of the cerebral hemisphere or in hemisection of the spinal cord. On your right, is an axon or a nerve fiber which is a long slender projection of a nerve cell or neuron that conducts electrical impulses away from the neuron cell body. Transcranial Magnetic Stimulation or TMS It is a technique that turns off a part of cortex by creating a magnetic field. It temporarily inactivates the neurons below the magnet. Researchers use TMS as a mapping technique. So for instance, when TMS coil is placed on motor cortex and while stimulating different regions along this cortical strip, muscle movements and twitches will be observed on the contralateral side of the body. From this, it can be observed that different body parts map onto different parts of the cortex and also how much cortex is devoted to any particular body part. The main disadvantage of TMS is that it is not very effective in reaching the subcortical structures.